The variety of equipment you are about to see in our materials analysis lab are useful for developing an understanding of the chemical and physical structures of materials. This helps us with new technology developments, quality issue root cause analysis, and, when combined with the permeation data, advances our understanding of how protected our products are keeping you in your end use. The first pieces of equipment are those which form our microscopy suite. Firstly, our scanning electron microscope with energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy. Unlike a typical microscope, which uses light, this uses a beam of electrons for imaging. Although this only gives us a grayscale image, it does mean it can zoom in much further than an optical microscope. This one can zoom in 60,000 times. The EDX add-on also allows us to create a map of the image, which tells you which elements are where on the sample. One example of the use of this is in looking at the fillers in a sample. A micropores film, as used on the Alphatech 1800 and 2000, both contain calcium carbonate, and this can show you where that is within the sample. The second microscope is our Olympus optical microscope. This one uses light for imaging, and so you can get a full colour image, which can reveal some physical details which the SEM cannot show. This one can zoom in up to a theoretical maximum of about a thousand times. It also has add-ons that allow us to obtain extra detail of the surface structure and also look at where stress is in a plastic sample, such as a visor material. Where the microscopy suite can reveal details on the physical structure of materials and the SEM EDX can reveal the elements present, the FTIR reveals the molecular structure. The difference between elemental and molecular structures can be understood by looking at these molecules. Both of these are made up of carbon, the black parts, and hydrogen, the white parts. The elemental analysis will look at both of these and say that there is carbon present, whereas molecular analysis will be able to tell you that one of them is linear and one of them is circular. In the real world, this helps us to determine things such as the polymer types of a material and the plasticizers present. In addition to the FDIR, we are able to analyze the molecular structure of materials using the GCMS and LCMS in the chemical lab. By extracting and dissolving them in solvents, this can sometimes reveal information with a higher level of sensitivity and specificity than the FTIR alone. The final piece of our standard lab equipment is the Differential Scanning Calorimeter, or DSC. Small samples of material are heated and cooled and the energy required for this can give us important information on the material's thermal properties. These can be melting points, freezing points and crystallisation states where an important physical change has occurred in the material. This is helpful to enable us to understand how our materials perform at different temperatures and how manufacturing processes can be refined to be better suited to the materials being used. Our final capability is not a standard piece of lab equipment, but a high performance workstation computer. This is packed full of computational power, which enables us to carry out complex calculations simultaneously and much faster than a typical computer. We use this for various machine learning applications, which help us to understand our other experiments in greater depth and analyse data trends, as well as molecular modelling, which allows us to create models of materials at an atomic level and simulate experiments. An efficient way of understanding and optimising material properties for better comfort, performance and protection.